Hey everybody, Brad here. Just want to give you a quick tour of the settings for the WT Offload S3 plugin. I've already selected a bucket here and the default settings are present. So let's go through those. So the first one is if you have it enabled, it'll just copy the files to S3 as you upload files to your media library. It doesn't affect any existing files that are in your media library. In fact, none of these settings do. Uh, this rewrite file URLs option uh, just rewrites, you know, if you have it enabled, it'll rewrite the file URL. So for example, a featured image on a post, the file URL will be rewritten to be the S3 URL instead of the local server URL of the file. So if you disable this, you can actually, or sorry, if you, if you turn this off, you can actually uh, start serve your files from uh, your local server temporarily. And if you turn it on, you can serve your files from S3. This won't affect any of the file URLs in your content, however, just any dynamically written URLs. So for example, featured images, or maybe gallery shortcode tags, for example. Down here, we're gonna configure the URL. So by default, uh, we have bucket name in the subdomain. So my bucket name is here, and then is, which is the subdomain and then we have the rest of the path. So we can change this to make the bucket name in the path here, which is also valid S3 URL, or we could, if we named our bucket name as a domain, so if I had like sandwichcity.com as my bucket name here, then I, this option would make sense. It doesn't right now. And if I configured CloudFront, it would make sense. So maybe I have uploads.sandwichcity.com. So, uh, we could put a custom domain or a CloudFront domain in here, and uh, it would use that. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to set it as bucket name in path. And by default, we we put we add the WP dash content slash uploads into the path just because that's the you know the default URL with WordPress. Uh, if you're not sharing a bucket with other things, then I would recommend just turning that off to shorten your URL. It's really not necessary to have that there. Uh, I, I usually keep the year month stuff on just because it's a little bit easier to manage things. Um, and for SSL, I, I usually, my sites are mostly SSL, so I have OS SSL on usually. And you'll notice when you turn that on, this option is unavailable. And the reason for that is because you will get browser SSL errors if, if the bucket name is in the subdomain and you're using SSL. Let's go to the advanced options. So we can actually remove files from the server as they're copied to S3. So as soon as the file is up on S3, we remove it from the local server. And that's handy if you have a lot of large, large files and you know you don't want to uh, overload your server with too many of those files. For example, if you had a, a video uh, archive or something, that would make a lot of sense to remove those files. And uh, we do some intelligent things around that. Um, WordPress requires that your, for example, an image, if an image is removed from your local server and you try to edit it, it won't work because it's, it needs that file locally. But what we do is if you try to edit an image, we'll actually copy the file down from S3 to your local server temporarily while you edit the image and then remove it uh, again once you're done editing. So we do some, some lots of funny business around this remove files from server option. So that's an uh, you know, on or off, uh, up to you. So let's look at object versioning. So this is the little timestamp that you see at the end of the URL up here. You can see there's a little timestamp. And the reason we have that is mainly for caching. So for example, if you're using CloudFront, let's say you're using CloudFront and you upload an image uh, to your WordPress install, and then you decide, oh, I need to edit that. I wanted to you know, change something about that photo. Maybe you need to adjust the color balance or something. So you do that and then you upload that, that same file again with the same name. Well, CloudFront will have that, the old one cached and it won't let it go. You have to go through CloudFront's cache and validation system and it's a huge pain. So what we do is 
by adding this object versioning string at the end, anytime you upload a new version of the file, it, it creates a new URL. So CloudFront just recognizes it as a new file. Uh, so it gets around this cache invalidation issue. It also helps with, with browsers. So if you, for example, have a far future expiration header turned on, uh, browsers will cache uh, images and any assets uh, for a long, long time. So here we're setting it to 10 years in the future. So in the browser, you would have to do a hard refresh in order to get this, uh, you know, get the, an, the new version of an image. But with object versioning enabled, that's not a problem. You don't have to do a, a hard refresh because the newly uploaded file will have a different URL. So it'll be cached by the browser, but it'll be a new, a new version. And the last uh, option here is to copy high DPI at 2x images. And this is mainly for compatibility with the WP Retina 2x plugin that is very popular and a lot of people use. So uh, if you upload an image uh, and the at 2x uh, images are created by the WP Retina 2x plugin, uh, we will detect those and also copy those to S3 for you and we can serve those from S3 as well. So there you have it. Those are the all, all the options in the WP Offload S3 plugin. Thanks everybody.